What's up, everybody? Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com coming to you from Donald W. Reynolds Razorback Stadium following Arkansas's red-white scrimmage. The rain held off just long enough. I think it impacted the crowd a little bit. You probably hear a little bit of thunder. I don't know if this selfie stick is going to attract lightning or what, but some good stuff out here today. You know, this was an opportunity to really get a nice long look at some of the new stuff with the offense and the defense, all the changes they've made, the new additions. And I'm not really going to talk about just the red-white game. We'll discuss it a little bit, but really want to just talk about what I've seen. I watched, I guess, parts or all of 13 practices this spring, and there's just two of them were close. So we got a lot of a lot of good time to see, you know, Dan Enos' offense, all the new guys. I would say, you know, just kind of starting off with like, I don't know if it's like a most improved award or whatever, but Isaiah Satania, I mean, the guy had three catches today. Two of them went for touchdowns, 95 total yards. You know, I thought this pass he had to uh, from KJ with Antonio Greer was a great recognition by KJ Jefferson. And then he had another pass down here in the in the corner of the end zone in the northwest corner on a little fade. I think uh, Courtney Snelling was in coverage there. I don't know that anybody could have defended that play, though. I mean, it was perfectly thrown. I think it was Cade Fortin. Might have been Criswell. I don't remember who was throwing it, but uh, just a great catch there. But Isaiah looks so much more filled out, more confident. I think he's going to really make a nice impact for this team. And really all those wide receivers, Isaac, Isaac Tesla, I, uh, I thought that he really started coming along, you know, the last mm, seven, eight practices or so, just started to get more and more comfortable. And that's part of, you know, you got a new offense, you're thinking a lot. You're not really able to go full speed because you're thinking about everything. You know, there's so many different possibilities. Most people don't know. Some routes have, you know, two different options and stuff on them. So there's all kinds of things that the players are thinking about when they're going through all this stuff. But I thought he really started taking things up to another level. I would say, like, I feel pretty confident right now that I would say that Isaac Tesla is going to lead them in catches and yardage maybe touchdowns. I really like what I see out of Tyrone Broden, although he was injured a good portion of the spring. He got hurt right before before spring break. And But, you know, 6'7", long, tall, good-looking wide receiver. Andrew Armstrong, kind of a do-it-all type of guy. I think they're going to be okay. I think they're going to be okay at wide receiver. And plus, you got, you know, like Luke has at tight end. That's another really good addition. I don't know if, like, they would say, release a depth chart today and say, you know, Luke has is the starting tight end, but he's the starting tight end. I really think that that's where they're at. Now, 6'3", 226, probably needs to add some more weight. I don't think he's going to be an inline guy. And I think that's where the portal starts to come into play because I know a lot of you guys are aware the portal opened today, April 15th, two weeks, uh, I guess, of chaos. And we'll see if anybody from Arkansas leaves. Right now they've got seven open scholarships. I think a couple of tight ends make some sense, a couple of defensive tackles, veteran linebacker, two safeties. Probably another offensive lineman just to get the numbers right because they're about 14 scholarship offensive linemen. You'd like to be about 15, 16, really 16 offensive linemen. So they took two offensive linemen. I think that would be a smart move. And really anywhere else, I think they're in pretty good shape. You know, it's just kind of like a best available. And we'll see what happens with players leaving the portal from Arkansas or entering the portal from Arkansas and stuff. But um, there are a few holes that they've got to address here. I'm, you know, defensive tackle, I think, is a key one. You know, tight end. I'd like to see them get a guy or two, but a guy that can block, you know, 260, bigger guy, veteran, who can block and also sneak out and, and catch a pass and be a real threat in the passing game. I don't know if they have that combination just yet. They got some good young tight ends. Ty Washington, they got Shamar Easter coming in, of course has who I mentioned. But, uh, you know, if they're gonna run like 12 personnel with two tight ends, which that's what they came out with right at the start of spring football, then they're gonna need some more tight ends. So defensive tackle address that. And I know like, you know, if you have the guys that you have healthy, but think about defensive tackle, like you got two guys coming off of knee injuries and another guy, Cam Ball, has got an ankle issue and wasn't able to play today and has, has been out for a while. You're gonna have injuries at every position. So, you know, if anything you learned last year, you felt like secondary, you know, has some decent depth to it. And then they just got decimated by injuries and it was the worst secondary in the country last year. Did you look at the Fred W. Smith Center, football operations? It was one of the nicest weather days, I will say that, for a red-white game that we've had in a long time. And then again, the rain held off. You can see in the background what it looks like. It's a little warm and steamy right now. So, other positions. Offensive line. 
they were a mad scientist throughout the whole spring until probably the last seven practices, something like that. More and more started getting comfortable. I'd say the one battle that you notice right now, you've got uh, right guard probably, uh, maybe Takias Crawford, Joshua Braun. You might put Joshua Braun a little bit of a leg up right now at that spot, just based on what I've seen, you know, and how they're rotating them around. But I think they feel pretty good about where they are at tackle now with Patrick Kudis. You know, Landon Jackson says he really likes Kudis, defensive end, so that's a strong endorsement from a from another player and says that's a move that they probably should have made a while back. So where should I take? I'm gonna take y'all up here. Check out my old house where I lived in college on Markham here. We used to park cars. It looks a lot different. This whole place looks different. I was thinking about that. You know, I came up here in 96 and I mean, it, the stadium was two grandstands. There were practice fields right here. But I haven't checked this house out in a while. I parked over here at a buddy's place. How's it going? A little bit different parking for the red white. But offensive line, I think they're, I think they're getting things figured out there. I, Sam Pittman said of Marion Harris is, you know, they don't think it's anything serious, but he kind of went down with a little bit of a, a bad knee. Alpha Phi Alpha House have been in there a few times back in the day. They got a party going on. But uh, yeah, it seems like he's going to be okay. But the numbers, they just they just need better numbers, just like to get through practice and stuff. But I think they've got enough competition. You I mean they've got like eight guys that are like legitimately competing for starting jobs. It's row week. I saw Pooh Paul and uh, Cam Ball had shaved their heads as part of their initiation. So, what else do we want to talk about offense? Quarterback is obviously, you know, getting Jacoby Criswell was one of the biggest moves that they made. A guy that can actually go into a game and win it for you. My house is white now. It used to be brown. This is where I used to live in college. Right there. We used to park cars here for games. We parked cars and provided a keg. <laughs> a couple of kegs, I guess. We ended up spending all our money on kegs, but 1520 Markham. I wonder who lives there now. They've done a lot of renovations to that place in the last 20 years. So, uh, offense, kicker's obviously in good shape. Cam Little hit a 58 yard field goal today. Punter, I worry about that a little bit, just the inconsistency. I mean, that's something that's going to make a big difference in games, right? I mean, think about how many games are, you know, just very tight. And there are times where you need your punter to pin them deep. So Max Fletcher has got to get consistent. He's got a leg. He can, he can boot the hell out of the ball. It's just the consistency of it. I mean, too many times we saw him at midfield and, you know, get a 28-yard punt. You just, you just can't have that kind of stuff. Not in the SEC. Not worth the field position. Time at the end of games is so critical. But getting Jacoby was was big for them. I think with, with Dan Enos, what we saw here, the pace was a little bit different with the offense. You're going to see more throws over the middle. I think you'll see more screen passes as well. This will do the RPO and all that kind of stuff. But you're going to see more screen passes and a lot of more throws over the middle, which I know is something that people kind of clamor for a lot. I noticed that last Saturday when they ran like 80 plays. I watched them run like 80 non-tackle foot up plays. And I was just thinking, man, they're really throwing it over the middle. And they did that some today too, but I don't know if they did it with quite the, at quite the same level. Defense, defensive end is in good shape. I don't think that that's, uh, that's a concern. Uh, get Trajan Jeffcoat. Trajan Jeffcoat looks to me like if you, you know, locked them all in a room and shut the door and threw away the key, he'd be the guy that would come out. You know, 6'5", 280. Just put together really well. Landon Jackson is really coming on strong, having a good spring. I think finally feeling comfortable, as Sam Pittman said, after his ACL. So 
defensive end. I mean, like really, you, you know, those guys come out, and you still got you got you know, John Morgan, you got uh, Zach Williams, Jashad Stewart. You're in good shape there. It's just defensive tackle. They need they need they've got to have a well, they got one. They need one more. They got Tank Booker. Maybe that Trill Carter guy or something. I mean, they need they could use one more defensive tackle. And I think they'll be in good shape. I wouldn't mind seeing them get a veteran linebacker. I just think with linebacker, you've got some really good, talented young guys. Love what I saw out of Jordan Crook this spring. I, I loved what I was seeing out of Manny Powell before he got injured. I don't think it's a serious injury or anything, but you know, Manny Manny will strike you now, uh, and he's put together you know good size on him. Uh, uh, I think that Christopher Paul is going to end up being like a team captain when I don't know this year, but because he's just a redshirt sophomore, but I think eventually he'll end up being like a team captain for him, like that kind of that kind of attitude, that kind of player. Uh, and then Antonio Greer was a really big get for him out of the transfer portal. Just maybe if you get one more like that, then you'd be in really good shape there. Defensive secondary, obviously, you know, that's a, like literally nowhere to go but up. Worst, worst defensive secondary in the country last year. A lot of that was injuries. Uh, but they did it, I mean, it was kind of like weird, like breaking down everything. They had seven, safety slash nickel guys transfer out last year which is which is an insane amount of players but uh, you've got you know the guys that they have come in we didn't even see Al Walcott any this spring because he has a, a knee injury but he's, he's going to be fine by probably next month I think I, I heard him tell somebody he's like yeah my knee's feeling really good heard, uh, that was Friday at practice um, Snacks Johnson has done really well love what you know you hear from him like you ask asking uh, um, Pooh Paul like somebody that's really standing out and he mentioned Snacks Johnson because you know he's a guy that's very physical and he can cover and that's an aspect he really likes about him. Snacks isn't like they've got some guys that they brought in from the transfer portal that got a little dog in them you know and Snacks has that. Tree has that. Trajan Jeffcoat. Uh, everybody's got a nickname. There's like nine guys on here that go by nicknames. I don't know I don't know if I've ever seen that many nicknames on one team but there's there's a lot of them and uh, yeah I mean I Antonio, he, he's got that, you know, in our interview with Antonio, you just felt that, the passion that he has and how excited he is to be here and how embraced he feels and all those kind of things. Walk over to this park. But they need a couple of safeties. I don't think there's any question about that. I think Hudson is a guy that, you know, you trust back there. But I'm talking like going out and getting somebody who can be a difference maker. And Walcott, I think, will assume that nickel spot. I wouldn't mind, I mean, like just from a number standpoint, I think you need 18 defensive backs, you know, and, and defensive backs these days are more like, you know, cornerbacks have all gotten taller, safeties have all gotten a little bit smaller, and, you know, they kind of just met in the middle. You don't see 6'2", 215 at safety that much anymore. But I think that, you know, you can, you can potentially move some guys around and stuff. The, the bottom line is just go out and get two more really good, good size uh, defensive backs and then, then put your best five out there. But uh, back to linebacker a little bit. I think the way the schedule shapes up, you got three games. You know, the young guys, I think, can get a little bit more maturity. And, and Jordan Crook has played a decent bit. You know, Powell hasn't played a whole lot, not at, at linebacker specifically. So you got those three games for them to, you know, kind of get their feet a little bit more wet. But I, I just still think that it would – I mean, you've got seven scholarships left, and you're probably going to have a couple of guys leave. I mean, there are guys that, you know, maybe a little bit older that aren't really pushing yet for starting jobs, and those are the guys that you keep your eye on. I think it'll be interesting to see also this aspect of it, because remember a few years ago, Mike Woods just shocked everybody and left. You're like, what the hell, Mike? What? But now you see that stuff all the time, and we know there's tampering going on in college football. Um, players that probably have gone through spring football and know that they're transferring, even if they're a key player. We're gonna see that. You're gonna see teams that are just shocked. The portal again opened today, but you're gonna see teams that are just like shocked by a player leaving. And hopefully for Arkansas, that doesn't happen to them, but it very well could. There absolutely could be guys on this roster that know they're going to another team just because that's how things are. And the NCAA just kind of lets it happen. What else do we want to cover? Love the energy from the new coaches especially on defense, big Marcus Woodson fan. I just felt like um, the energy is different on defense. And the communication, it's almost like they over-communicate. It's like they stress, just do it more. Like it, when in doubt, communicate. Uh, but you hear a lot of talking. When you get down there like field level, you can see a lot of talking on defense. And 
Um, that's encouraging. I love the energy, but you know, Marcus Woodson, I've talked about him before, just what he did at Florida State. They were one of the worst pass defenses in the country in 2019. He gets there, and then a few years later, they're number four in the country, 168 yards a game given up. So um, I didn't really get a whole lot of opportunities to see uh, Darren Woodson just because, you know, he, his group, he always seemed like he was on the other side of the field. So I didn't see him a whole lot. Travis Williams is very energetic. I mean, he'll run through the drill as an example before. Um, and Dan Enos, I think from a technical side of things, you know, he's gonna really help those guys. And, and Morgan Turner too, didn't see a whole lot of Morgan Turner. Again, you know, just where their position and where we're allowed to walk around. Um, but obviously he's coached a lot of, of big time tight ends and we'll see what kind of business he can do in the transfer portal. Cause I think they need a couple. You know, you gotta get through practices. You gotta, you know, even if it's not guys who play, but I think they need, they need somebody who can get down at the goal line, deliver a big block and catch a pass. But new additions I think have been pretty solid overall, just kind of different than, than the last guys, just different. You know, I think Dan Enos can help them. Like, we'll see if he's as good a play caller as Browse was. And, you know, people give Browse a hard time, you know, anytime a third down pass goes short of the line of scrimmage. Most teams are going to take 471 yards of offense per game, which Arkansas put up last year. But I think that, you know, the pace of the offense is a little bit different. You're going to see more play action, more quarterback under center. Um, hopefully they abandon, get a first down and run up to the line of scrimmage in a hurry and run a play up the gut for two yards. It's the worst play in football. All right, everybody. I have a long spring walking talk, but we had a lot to cover. Thank you for joining me. We got plenty of stuff going on still. I mean, Hog Sports, by the way, is 50% off right now at HAWG Sports if you want to follow along. Plenty of basketball stuff going on with the portal. Football recruiting never stops. The portal just opened for football. And of course, there's baseball as well. And we'll have plenty of stuff as the weeks go on just from, from football and everything that we gathered this spring that you'll want to go check out at HAWG Sports, hogsports.com. That's it. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me. And uh, I don't know, we'll probably do some kind of walk and talk something sometime this summer. This won't be the last. We won't have a whole break all the way. And then you can also check out Hog Sports Live, which airs Mondays around 11. All right, everybody. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com. We'll catch you next time.